Well, good morning, everyone. A little nippy out here this morning. I'm still in Missouri. Um, it's probably only 60s right now. You know, the morning's getting a little more chilly. You can tell fall's in the air, great time of the year, I tell you. I love fall, one of my favorite uh, seasons. But what I'm down here, I'm down near, in the pond, near the pond here, and this is the, uh, what I'm standing in is in the, the emergency spillway. So what I'm about to do here is, and I've seen this on a lot of conservation departments and stuff, uh, suggest this but what we're going to do is we're going to put a a small fence here or screening here um so we can uh if we ever have any one of those you know once a lifetime floods or a lot of a big rainfall we've had some big rainfalls here i mean when this pond got filled up we got you know five to six inches of rain and you know it filled it probably a, a quarter of a way you know so we can get some big rains here so the purpose of this is to uh if we do get a big rain and, and the thing is about fish, if, if the water comes up here, starts flowing down this emergency spillway, the fish will seek that, you know, that flow, that stream. So we haven't put our uh, predator fish in here yet. We're doing that um, in October, but um, right now um, we got our forage fish in there. So we have bluegill, catfish, you know, minnows, shiners, everything else in there. So I'm putting a, a quarter inch screen along here. It's about 10 foot long. I want to stake it out. And, uh, and that will keep, you know, let the water go through, but it will keep any of the fish from going through. So I did, like I said, I did a quarter inch. I probably could have gone a half, but you know, it just keeps it all down. You know, pretty much anything can't go through it. So whether it's minnows or shiners or whatever, or even baby fry, whatever. But um, so anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to put a screen up against here. Um, then we'll just, you know, the only, the only negative thing about doing that is that I have to weed eat around it. You know, I can't mow with a mower around it. So, you know, I just have to, that's the only, that's the only bad thing, but other than that, um, anyway, we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll get started here. Well, hello everyone, um, I am back. So yesterday morning, you got a different color shirt on um, and I don't have my jacket on. I was, I was trying to do this video yesterday morning and as soon as I got set up out here, our uh, contractor showed up for the uh, safe room that we're putting in our uh, new house we're building. So I had to go up there and uh, make sure everything we, we, we were doing was done correctly, you know, make sure the door was the right size and, you know, just odds and end things. So, um, unfortunately, I didn't get down here to do this, uh, what I was going to do yesterday. And so, um, as I stated yesterday, we were going to build a, a fence along this emergency spillway. Um, I just got one stake. I haven't put it in the ground or anything. I just kind of where I think I want to put it at. Um, so anyway, this emergency spillway, you got the dam side and then you got this hill over here. Um, and so if the water gets high enough, you know, uh, more than what my, my overflow siphon out there in a the pond. I don't know if it's in this picture or not. Yeah, it is. So back over here, um, there's a, uh, you can see a yellow top on there with a, uh, kind of a greenish blue pipe. Well, that's my normal overflow back there. And so how that works, um, that siphons from the bottom. So a lot of people think, oh, why do you got a trash rack on there? The trash rack is really, if you had a really, you know, torrential rain for days on days, you know, and, and the um, overflow could not handle it, um, then, you know, it's just to keep trash from going in there or something getting clogged into the pipe itself. But that would probably never happen because where the top of that uh, trash rack is, is higher than the emergency spillway here. So let's say that the top of that trash rack or the top of that green pipe is 14 inches um, higher than the white pipe inside of it well that would be higher than what this ground is right here this would probably be maybe you know let's say eight inches or something like that on grade so your water is going to come over the emergency spillway before it ever get over that green pipe there so normally the way it works is if it rains you get a steady rainfall not a lot of rain it comes up from the bottom and then drops into a pipe inside that that green pipe or that bluish green pipe whatever color you want to call it so anyway so what we're doing here we're doing a uh, we're gonna put a screen here on this uh, this pond or this, like I say, this emergency spillway. And that's to keep the fish, if we ever have a lot of rain and, and it floods and the water wants to come over this emergency spillway, we don't want the fish seeking that, uh, that you know, pretty much a stream here in that, in that effect, you know, and they will seek that, that area, you know, where water's flowing out. So we don't want to get our bass in here and, and other fish, you know, especially our predator fish, and we don't want to lose them. And we don't want to lose our, our uh, our forage fish either you know we got minnows and shiners and uh, um, 
uh, bluegill, you know, uh, hybrid bluegill and red ear and stuff and catfish. We don't want to lose those either. So, um, you know, you spend a lot of money on you know, getting these fish. And yes, we could have got these from the state for free. A lot of states will offer that, but you got to look at the regulations. One of the things if you'll find out that if you get fish from the state for free, then you have to abide, at least in Missouri, you got to abide by their re regulations. So that means creel limits, um, fishing license, etc. You know, as a property owner, you don't need fishing license and your immediate family, but anybody else would need fishing license. Um, I bought these fish myself, so I can have anybody fish my pond. They don't need a license. Um, I don't have to abide by any creel limits. Um, I can sell my fish. I can sane my fish. I can do whatever I want because they're my fish. They don't belong to the state. Um, even though you do get fish from the state, uh, it doesn't give people the right to fish your pond. They, you know, the state encourages to let people fish your pond, you know, get people outdoors and fishing and stuff, but um, you don't have to. But in this case here, like I said, I, we bought our own fish. We stocked our own pond. That way, I, you know, if I want to have nieces and nephews and you know, whatever over here, I don't have to, uh, you know, friends, you know, whatever. I don't have to, nobody has to have a license. So, you know, you can fish my pond, you know, as they wish. So, anyway, let's get started here. Let's see if I can uh, get this thing across here and uh, see what happens. So I don't know if I mentioned yesterday in the video, so I'm using a hardware cloth. This is a quarter inch. Now, I probably didn't have to go this small, but I probably, uh, yeah, but yeah, this is going to keep pretty much everything out. So, from going out, let's say. So, anyway, it's a, a three feet high by 10 foot long. So, again, it's a hardware cloth and it's a, it's a quarter inch squares in it. So, pretty much going to stain anything from, from keeping it, you know, going through here besides water. So, first thing I'm going to do is just see how long it's 10 feet long, but see where my 10 feet takes me. I'm just going to lay it on the ground. I think that will work because basically if you look at this goes up we'd have to go up around that hill there so the hill is kind of depression right here so I think I'm gonna put this depression right here that's good enough for the height so I'll put one on the other side over here I'm going to put a little piece of wire around this. I don't want to clip them on the pole yet, so I'm just going to put a little piece of wire on here so I can kind of halfway stretch it out a little bit to see how long I need. I'll tell you what, if you ever buy a pair of wire cutters for fences or whatever, these uh, Nipex are really, really good. They're expensive but they are really great wire cutters. I mean, you won't find a better uh, a better pair. And they just, they last forever. Uh, made in Germany, so that just gives you an idea. Now again, this is temporary to stretch my fence out a little bit and see where I need to put my other pole. Sorry for the wind noise if we got any wind in the video today. It's kind of windy out today. Move this camera a little bit. Make sure you get both sides. I have to do is take and dig a little bit out here. Um, get that wire to down because there's a depression here. You know, if you can see my hand here, there's a depression right there in the center. 
what you'd expect it to be because that's why I say this is a little part of the vertical So I'm about to either cut the wire, I might just cut it, and that might be easier. Cut the wire so it will sink down in there, and then I'll put a couple more posts on both sides there. So I'll probably use four posts right now um, with this 10 foot section. So what I'll do is I'll pull it down, fold it down, and cut the excess off. Make sure it's sitting uh, down next to the ground. My dog found my uh, deer block I put out the other day. It's got an apple smell to it. And that wind's blowing this way. And he, he swam across his pond all the way over there and that's exactly where he went to. They got a nose on him. up using that galvanized wire that came with the wrapped around the hardware cloth you know until I decide if I'm gonna use straps or something or nylon high wraps but those that galvanized wire might be all right Dig a little trench along here. Drop this wire in. The only shovel I brought with me. I didn't really bring the shovel. This shovel's been sitting in my UTV since I did the uh, crawl space when I drained it out. trench along the bottom of that fence so turn the camera around here so anyway you can see I dug a trench along there and I just filled it in with the grass again the dirt and grass you know it'll it'll take uh, root again you know um, but anyway so that's what I did then I'll put a couple more stakes in here
right, so nothing fancy. Uh, I'll take it off the can, off the tripod here. Um, but I think we'll do the job. I might come back and uh, have you ever seen those wire? They're like a loop. I can even make them with some uh, harder, uh, you know, thicker wire, and uh, put them down on the bottom down there so that can't ever move out. So I just want to tell you, uh, thanks for watching again. Um, you know, there's always something different going on on the farm here. Um, later today, I'm going to frame out a. Uh, I got a two by six wall I got to frame out. I don't think I'll probably film that. It's just a one wall I, I need to get done. Um, but got a few other projects. I'd love to start on the dock. I don't know if that, that time will. Uh, if I'll have time to do that this this trip or not, but uh, we need to start getting some joists in the dock so we can get to start using that dock. But uh, or let my dog jump off of it anyway. But anyway, thanks for joining, and we'll catch you on the next video.